Traveling around Afghanistan, it is not hard to notice that it is a very man dominant society. I've spent about three weeks of my life here and it kind of makes me feel uncomfortable when I look at the streets and it's 90% men and all of the people driving the car are men, working in the shops and just pretty much doing anything outside are men. And so over the last few weeks, I have gone behind closed doors to meet with inspiring women and tell you their amazing stories because the truth is, there is just as many women as men. They're doing very inspiring things, living normal lives. The problem is, they're just shy of the camera. So in today's video, I wanna tell you the story of women in Afghanistan. What's your name and where are you from? I am Rehana Mohammadi and I am from Afghanistan. What do you do? What are your hobbies? I do cycling, skiing, snowboarding, running and some else. I am uh, riding bike about uh, four or two, five years and um, I've got many awards. About one or one and a half months ago in Bamiyan there was a, a cycling race between all the women of Afghanistan. So I could got the fourth, fourth position and now I am a member of national cycling team of Afghanistan. Talk about the, the women in, in society in Bamiyan. The women are much better because the situation is much better than the past. Telling to us that why you're cycling, that is bad for a girl to ride a bike or to ski or to go out of the home and to work. But now the situation is much better and the people now understood that uh, women can do everything that they want and uh, they are much stronger than they think. And uh, now uh, when we are cycling or skiing, now men, women, all the people encourage us. Do you hope that the situation around Afghanistan is better for women? I hope and I pray for all those women and all those girls who are living in Kandahar, Nangarhar and those, con uh, those uh, provinces that Taliban are there and they cannot go get out of home and they cannot do sports. I really pray them for them to be free. In Kandahar and, and those places, women are not uh, allowed to go out, but if they go out, they have to uh, uh, um, cover the face. But I cannot cover my face. <laughs> Everything began during this pandemic mm. and like uh, my husband was not working, my son was not working and like everybody was at home so it was like a big tension for everybody like not having income and then she said I was I was very good at cooking like I, I, I cooked a lot before and I was working in some restaurants as well so I said let's uh, let's let's just use my talent let's uh, just start a business and uh, and then we set it up like a uh, the page and then uh, like accepted people's orders on Facebook then, yeah on Facebook and also they have a phone number so anyone who called them they will just prepare food for them and then they send them I would like to know what are some of the challenges that you face starting a business here as a woman <laughs> they, they don't have like like the type of social challenges the only challenge is between them and their customers it's like sometimes they're not paying on time what's your name and where are you from she is Firishta Farrukhi from the center of Bamiyan province and she's here to learn music. How old are you and are you studying or? She's 11th grade in school and she's 19 years. So beside this uh, music, she plays football as well. Tell me your story, how you learned and how you became interested. So she says, when I was like uh, so young, I had a special interest in the field of music and I just loved music. So I tried to follow and I tried to continue learning, and especially when this group was uh, organized here like two years ago in Bamiyan. The name of the group is Salsal and uh, they just started learning the basic of the music here and also during their uh, 
school holidays, like during the education holidays, especially during the winter when it's too cold here. She goes to uh, Kabul and uh, learned music out there. Do you hope to be a role model for other women to follow their dreams or to do what they like, follow their passion? Or mm -hmm. she says exactly. That's what I want. So obviously, Afghanistan is a very men dominant society. How do you feel about that and, and do you hope for change for women to have a more important role in the society? So yeah, this is, this is true that Afghanistan is a main dominant country, but uh, it doesn't mean that we are like powerless. We have talents, we are trying to show that what we can do and what we are capable of. We try our best. We will never stop doing this. Hi, I'm Fahima and I am the first female mystical dancer in Afghanistan. That was amazing. Yeah, How do you feel? I feel at peace. How did you get inspired or how did you start learning how to dance? Uh, because in the first when I uh, saw the dervishes. She saw these Sophies sitting around, working around, reading, like mm -hmm. working on mystical dances together. She was so uh, inspired by them mm -hmm. and she wanted to learn that. What do you think your role is as a female? Are you trying to inspire other women? Normally, this mystical meditation and mystical dance is normally done in a private area, just you and the, the universe mm -hmm. and the God. But she says, I try to do this in the public because I had to do my mystical targets as well. And at the same time, she says that I want to show that women can, can mm -hmm. and they are there. If we are doing this, it's on a private with ourselves. But now I want to do this in the public so anyone should see and they should believe that they are there. Have you gotten a lot of hate or backfire or people saying you can't be doing this or any any sort of that thing happening to you? Uh, yeah, there was some people uh, from the public um, that they said that uh, you are a girl and you are a, um, a young girl that you should not do it because uh, it's main based dance. dance and you cannot do it, you should not do special. Uh, I can say to them that I'm a human and I don't care that uh, what they think and uh, I do anything that I love. If you could say one message to the world, anything, what would you say to them? Uh, my message in the, uh, to all of the people in the world uh, is that if you want to change the world, uh, you can start from yourself. So please tell me what's your name and where you're from. Fatma Hassani is from Afghanistan. Uh, she's Fatma Hassani from Afghanistan. I see that you're a very good photographer. Tell me how you got inspired to take pictures professionally. Thank you very much for watching. I was very excited to be a part of my life. It was a passion for her uh, since uh, childhood. And she really liked to take photos. As soon as she was able to do it, she started and she had the specific education for that. And now she's, uh, she loves to take photos of the beautiful places of Afghanistan. What are your goals in the next five years? Where do you see yourself? So she wants to be the highest peak of what she can do to show the nice aspects of Afghanistan. So through my lens, I want to show that women are capable of doing lots of things, uh, like uh, being active as a civil society activist, like business and every other uh, aspect of life. And especially myself, I picked photography to show the activities of women from around Afghanistan, especially you saw my friend Fahima doing the mystical dancing. Uh, now I've just started with her. So is there anything else you want to say about women in Afghanistan? She just wants to say that the women in Afghanistan are very powerful, they are very talented, they can do lots of things, but there are some problems, mainly insecurity, mainly uh, there are other like aspects of life that they push her to stay more at home, uh, mainly like religious problems, traditional problems, cultural problems and stuff like that. But uh, if you 
concentrate on the power of women in Afghanistan and the amount of the uh, promotion that they had during the last 20 years. It was great and, uh, and amazing and that uh, they're doing better and better. How does it make you feel about Afghanistan being such a men-dominant society? This is actually sad. Uh, it, is, it is a big problem, but it doesn't mean that uh, we should stay quiet. It doesn't mean that we shouldn't begin from somewhere. We need to start from ourselves. We need to bring changes to ourselves. And then you suddenly see the magic happens, and then uh, everything will be fine and okay. What's your name and where are you from? My name is Masima. I'm from Mazar Sharif. So what is your job? I'm a finance manager for a company. Do you think women in Afghanistan are having more freedom or less freedom? The situation is uh, different. Uh, for example, in Mazar Sharif, Kabul, Herat, Bamiyan, is good for women. They can uh, do everything. They can study, they can work, they can go out from their house. But uh, from the far away province, they can't um, study, they can't work, they can't um, go out from their house and um, do some, something. Okay, so talk about the women's role in their families around Afghanistan. It uh, depends on their family. 60 to 70 percent of them, they have to stay home, they have to cook wash, uh, take care of their um, kids, but uh, uh, 25 or 30 percent uh, of them, they can go out, they can work, they can do something, like me. Like you. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Is there anything else you want the world to know about women in Afghanistan? Uh, there are lots of uh, women in Afghanistan, they're uh, living in normal life, uh, but they they are not comfortable with the uh, camera, and uh, they are shy. Uh, culturally, they are not comfortable with the uh, strangers, uh, with their photos. Mm -hmm. Well, Noor, it's been awesome uh, going around Afghanistan and meeting all these inspiring women and hearing their stories. And I think there's a very uh, bright future for women in Afghanistan. Women are very strong, actually. True. They are doing a very good job. Like they are extremely talented, and uh, especially now they're they're like highly competing against right. men in Afghanistan. Right. Uh, which is nice. They're like, especially my own like sister, my wife, anyone like all educated. They're having their own jobs, and uh, mm -hmm. they're having a very good uh, life. Right. Here. So hopefully one day, like uh, now we're talking about the women inside the main cities like Herat, Kabul, and Mazar, and right. Bamiyan. Right. So you remember how women were powerful in Bamiyan. Yeah, right? very powerful. And we hope one day this will get like progress, bigger and bigger and bigger to mm -hmm. like the more like rural areas. Right. And, yeah, it will reach into like the villages and the, the countryside. Right. Like, hope one day, but yeah, yeah. it's, it's so, getting bigger. So thank you guys for watching. I just wanted to make this video for all the women out there to let you know that there are are a lot of very inspiring women in this country they're just shy of the camera yeah and they just don't want to be filmed but um, I did my best to tell you some of those stories and um, thank you guys for watching yeah yeah thank you so much yeah yeah the, the Drew is right uh, the thing is that women are culturally uh, they don't like camera and uh, probably they like but they're so shy and then uh, also they don't really feel comfortable for the strangers uh, to right. just take their photos so that's why like we don't have like lots of uh, women photos and videos and footage from Afghanistan like it's a it's it's also very difficult especially all the photos are taken by foreigners who come to Afghanistan right. and it's extremely difficult for women to like you know open their face or whatever right for a photographer who never saw them in their own life and then just allow them to take their photos right. and also with men uh, men also somehow uh, don't really feel comfortable and also culturally right like uh, uh, it's it's kind of not good for them a stranger come right. and just take their photo of sister or mother or wife or stuff like that so well Noor, thank you for taking me around yeah. uh, can't wait to see more of this country welcome Drew yeah thank you so much <laughs> Lala John. <laughs> that means thanks a lot my friend yeah. right my friend yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. something like that I'm Drew Binsky and if you like my travel videos please click subscribe and ring that little bell so you can get notified on all my upcoming videos as I take you to every single country in the world.